Welcome to Frank Teaches DevOps. Welcome, my lovely viewers, my lovely subscribers. Um, in today's um, video, I I will be describing, all right, or discussing what persistent volume is and um, how we could use a persistent volume with Amazon EKS, right? So our focus is on Amazon. So persistent volume, okay? Um, let's dive into what actually is persistent volume. Now, persistent storage is any data storage device that retains data after power to that device is shut off. Now, let me tell us why we need persistent volume. Assuming in your Kubernetes cluster, you have um, a critical application, right? And this critical application writes data to a database, okay? It writes data to a database. And the database also runs in the cluster as a pod, right? It runs as a pod. If the application goes down, let me just give a pictorial representation of this. Um, let me give a pictorial. So this is your pod. And this is, this is your DB. Right? So this pod writes data to the database. Let me close this. So this pod writes data to the database. Writes data. So this pod writes data to the database, right? So it means that the pod's data is being persisted on the DB, right? The pod's data, this pod's data is persisted on the DB, okay? So if anything goes wrong, let's say for assuming um, anything goes wrong with the pod, let's change this coloring. Uh, let me use red, red as anything that goes wrong. So let's assume this pod goes down, pod is down. Let's assume pod is down, okay? So if this pod goes down, pod is down, its data is being persisted on the DB. However, this data that is being persisted here is temporal. Temporal. Temporal persistence. Should I use that word? Temporal persistence. Wherever. Anyway, in as much as you understand what I'm trying to explain. All right? So the data in here is temporarily persisted. Okay? Now, what if... What if... What if the DB also goes down. What if this DB also goes down? Let's look forward for something. DB. DB is down. What if this DB is down? It means that our entire data is gone. Our entire data, let's change this color. You mean it means that the entire data is down. It means that our entire information is gone. Entire information is gone. Right? However, to avoid this kind of scenario, 
to avoid such scenario, we now have a Kubernetes object called persistent volume. Called persistent volume. Now, okay, let me let me change this color back to blue. This is another scenario. Okay, let me let me repaint for that scenarios. Uh, let me push these guys up. Let me push these guys up. Just bear with me. I'm giving you better scenarios. Okay. Let me duplicate this. Take it up. This scenario is when everything went down. So it means I'm going to have a total total data loss all right so this is going to result into total data loss let me use um okay total data loss so for this we are going to have a total data loss all right at first my pod was writing data to my word DB. My DB acted as a temporal word persistent, a, per a temporal persistent storage, all right? Now, disaster now came and also affected my DB. My DB went down, all right? DB is down, thereby resulting towards a total data loss. Now, this is scenario one. Now, for us to avoid all of these data loss, for us to avoid total data loss, all right, it is highly recommended we set up a persistent volume, all right? We persist the DB's data on a storage. We persist the DB's data on a storage so that if the port goes down, the DB goes down, we still have those information stored in a device somewhere. Now, this is why the definition goes that persistent storage is any data storage device that retains data after power to that device is shut off, all right? So this data will be retained. The data stored in the DB will be retained this is what we are going to look at in this video and once more i welcome you to devos to frank teaches devos right so let's go ahead so for this we will be using uh we will be setting up our cluster on uh amazon eks and we will be using a plugin called container storage interface okay so container storage interface we'll be using container storage interface to set up a persistent storage all right so um uh csi is a plugin it's a storage plugin all right so i've i've, I've lived with us here i've dropped us uh, a link where you can read further um about a csi okay in our next page you shall see two kinds of options, two kinds, two ways we could set up a persistent storage using the container storage interface driver, Continuous, container storage interface driver, which is the CSI driver. So on persistent uh, volume, we have two options. As either you use the Amazon EBS CSI or you use the word Amazon EFS CSI. So EBS is Elastic Block Store, while EFS is Elastic File System. Okay, so quickly, so this is just a simple um, architecture. 
all right describing what we're going to achieve so uh, i have aws as my tenant in aws i have set up an eks so in, in eks i have a running cluster i also have ec esi sorry csi and csi um the data um i also have a running database in this context i'm using a mongodb right so the mongodb data is being persisted right and stored using what csi okay csi now to set up this entire um this entire uh, uh, persistent volume we shall be using the amazon eks knowledge base uh documentation and um, amazon uh, eks persistent storage documentation on the amazon uh, knowledge center okay so this is the link to that documentation this is a link okay so yeah so remember this is the entire scenario i just explained the scenario and let's go in and um, start setting up the entire process okay so that documentation where is the documentation again here it is okay so i'll be going through let's let's go back to the top how do i use persistent storage in amazon eks so there are two options um ebs csi and efs csi so um this is the prerequisite you have to have ac um amazon cli then here comes the option one so option a which is what ebs csi driver so we won't be using this option rather we will be using option b here is option b okay now right before me i have my cluster so keep ctl get node i have a workable cluster with two worker nodes all right so the first step says i should download this i am policy json file so i'll copy this file copy it paste it is downloaded so we have the file here so second step says create an i am policy so copy it also copy bring it here enter this policy has been created okay policy created we can save this output let's save this output copy let's save this output okay now step three says annotate the kubernetes service accounts with the i am role on and i am role with the kubernetes service accounts name okay so they said we should so um this step three so what is step three is going to do is step three is going to query the cluster and generate us with our open id connect um endpoint this output this command is going to create is going to output for us our open id connect endpoint which is needed in further steps all right so copy all of this go to our text editor and make some changes so my cluster name will be eks cluster eks cluster now copy everything Control c come to your terminal and run this command <laughs> so we have the oidc endpoint so save this oidc endpoint we shall need it in further step steps that's step three step four so we should create this rule all right however before we create this rule we should create this file trust policy.json all right so copy everything as it is copy it take it to your notepad and do some editing okay so in here i'm going to be changing my user uh, uh aws account id so my account id is somewhere up here so copy copy bring it here paste it that's my account id then um my region my region is eus2 eu west 2 
great then my oidc which is my open id connect open id connect id copy it bring it here make the changes paste one is there and another is here make those changes paste. then finally i need to change this region change this region eu west two okay so copy all of these as it is copy it bring it to your terminal and run it so enter so that has been created so this um, assume role has been created in aws so let's go for that so step five says create an iam role so creating an iam role i'm going to copy all of these copy uh we don't need to make any changes uh run it as it is enter that rule has been created okay perfect um step c says attach your new iam policy to the rule so copy this copy and let's go to our terminal so not our terminal our notepad and do some editing so my account id is going to change obviously account id bring it down here account id is changing right that's all copy it copy come your terminal and paste great it has been attached that rule has been attached now the next step which is step seven says what install the driver using images installed in the public acr so we are going to download this content and redirect that content into this file called public ecr so copy the entire command statement bring it into your terminal and sorry what was it oh sorry there's a mistake in uh in the command there is a character there all right so this is being downloaded it's being downloaded great done so now steps eight says we should edit this file all right and annotate this efs csi controller essay so we are going to annotate this um service account all right so this is what we need to do i'm going to go into the file all right vim public all right open the file then this is the first section right they are talking about so they say we should do some annotations all right so under labels i come down i say annotations right correct so the annotation is going to be um annotation is going to be this okay so i'm copying all of these as the key this is the key copy the key bring it here paste it that's the key then the value is going to be the the and the and name of my um driver driver role all right so the driver role so it's going to be the azure resource name of my driver role so i'll go to my um azure um tenants all right sorry amazon please i'll go to my aws <laughs> tenant i'll go to rules and i'll look for that role refresh the role that we created so this is the role so open this role i'm going to see the uh the an the an name which is a uh, amazon resource name copy it okay bring it here and paste so that is the value so if you check uh our documentation side by side with what we are doing is actually corresponding okay so this is it and here it is all right so the next thing we need to do i think we are through the name is that and the namespace is q system all right so now that was that now deploy so we should deploy this guy so let's save the file let's save it so to save this guy press escape on my keyboard shift and save so it's so which you say kubectl apply that f then public which will run this command now this is step one in the next phase this one step one so hit enter 
So it's going to tell us that all of these has been what created. All of these has been created in the cube system. All right. So great. Now step two says if the cluster contains only AWS fabric ports, no nodes, then deploy the driver. Since I have nodes, I don't have fabrics, so I'm going to skip step two. Step three: get the VPC of your um, Amazon EKS cluster. So copy this, get the VPC ID. So let's do some editing. Um, we could as well get that VPC ID from um, from from our tenants. All right. But let's just do it. Let's just run this as it is. So you see how it is done as well. So I'm changing my cluster name. My cluster name is going to change. EKS cluster. All right. So this will output for me my VPC ID. So with this, I'm going to get my VPC ID. So this is my VPC ID. So copy it, save it. Okay. So the next on our list will be get the CDA range for your VPC cluster for your VPC cluster. All right. So copy this guy. Copy this guy. Right. Copy this guy, and um, I need to change. Yeah, I need to replace this guy with my VPC ID. Okay, so um, so our VPC ID is this guy. Copy it, replace it here, replace it, and run to display the cedar block so our cedar is this so copy the cedar keep it somewhere save it you're moving now step five says now create a security group right for your to allow inbound and um, network file system all right so copy this guy bring it to your notepad so bring it to your notepad do the same thing uh vpc id so replace vpc id with this and let's run that command let's run that command so paste it and hit enter so this oh it's telling us that this security group already exists um let me delete that all right so uh it's telling us that that's um what's it called the security group already exists that's fine okay now step six says um add an nfs inbound rule so that resources in your vpc can communicate with your efs so copy that guy step six um let's add let's edit it first let's edit it so um the Okay, security group. So let's go and look for that security group and copy the ID. So he's saying us, telling us that the security group already exists. So let's look for that security group. So I think this is the security group. And then um, this is the ID. Sorry, sorry. So um, here's the security group and where's the id this is the id so copy this id bring it over here and um, change it somewhere here paste it then your vpc cedar that's the vpc cedar bring it down here bring it down here paste it and let's run the command so if you go to our terminal and paste that guy let's see all right it's also telling us that um this was created some time ago and um, then that um, it already exists it already exists this is fine i created this some time ago that's why uh, we are having those um those errors but it's fine so the next step is create an amazon efs file system for your amazon eks cluster so copy this 
the way it is um paste it and um, hit enter so this has been created so take note of the file system id is very key so let's copy copy that uh copy let's paste it somewhere here great okay okay so step eight says to create a mount target for amazon efs run the following command okay so let's copy this copy this and uh, let's do some editing let's do some editing paste it so we need to replace subnet id so i may have to now go to my um, aws console and um, pick my subnets that i use with alongside my worker nodes all right so change the subnet id subnet id is there then also i need to replace the file system id my file system id is somewhere around here so that's the guy this is my file system id copy it uh bring it here and paste so now let's run this entire oh we need to replace security group uh security group id so here's my security group id copy that copy um security group id is that okay is that so copy it uh i think that's all bring it to your terminal and run it and run it so great so this um, mount point has been created but however let's look at what they say important be sure to run the command for all availability zones with the summit id in the availability zone where your worker nodes are running replace file system id with the output of the preceding step seven uh replace security group with the output of the preceding step five and replace subnet id with the subnets used by your worker nodes now to create mount target in multiple subnets now we need we need to create mount target in um multiple subnets you must run the command in step eight separately for each subnet id so i have three subnets so i'm going to run that same command for the three different subnets in the three different availability zones all right so i'll go back to my subnet and i'll copy the second subnet id copy it i'll bring it to my notepad so i will change this guy sorry i'll remove um subnet replace it then i'll copy the entire command as it is copy it bring it to your terminal and hit enter it will create so i'll do the same thing for the third subnet id so copy the subnet id copy it bring it to my notepad make these changes make the necessary changes paste it and copy and bring it to our terminal and run it is going to create so great so we have uh, let's go back to our documentation all right great now we need to test we've we are done creating um, the mount target, right? Now, the next step says the Amazon EFS file system and its mount targets <clears throat> are now running and ready to be used by ports in the cluster. So let's confirm if this is actually correct. So for that, um, I'll go to my cluster. My cluster is somewhere here. Um, on my cluster, I'll go to networking. Uh, is it the cluster or, or, or the, sorry the efs sorry i'll go to my efs so i'll go to my efs come here and type efs all right so click on efs let's check if that is true so this is the efs id open this efs id so on this efs id i should go to um network if i go to network i should see those mount points i created so you can see so these mount points are running for the three different availability zones all right it's very important okay great so now let's go back to our documentation now we need to test test the amazon efs csi driver 
So you can test these, these, these by deploying two poles that write to the same file. All right. So they say we should um, we should um, clone the CSS um, driver repository from GitHub. So let's clone this guy. Copy this guy. Uh huh. So let's do a git clone. It's cloning. So we have um, this directly called AWS EFS CSI driver. Step two says go into this guy, go to examples, go to Kubernetes, and go towards multiple ports. So let's go there. Let's go there. So um, let's go there briefly. So we'll say CD into AWS that example Kubernetes multiple ports. So let's see what we have there. So the next step says retrieve your EFS ID that was created. Okay, so we can use this command, all right, to retrieve the EFS ID. So copy it, copy that command. You don't need to edit anything. Just paste it and press enter. This should give us our EFS ID, right? Great. Now, note, if the co command in step three returns more than one result, you can use the this ID that you saved earlier. That's perfect. In the spec pv.yaml file, replace this handle with your Amazon EFS file system ID from previous steps. Now let's check what's in this directory. In this directory, I have a spec directory. So I'll change directory to spec. Now in spec directory, what do we have? I have a claim.yaml file and a storage class.yaml file and a pv.yaml file. So let me see what's inside of um, the claim.yaml file. So I'll go into that claim.yaml file. Um, okay, storage size. This is a persistent volume claim. So I want um, a, a storage of, uh, let me say 10 GB, right? Okay. Escape, save and quit. And let me look what I have inside of a uh, pv.yaml. So pv.yaml, all right. So this is in this persistent volume object. So this is where they said we should replace the volume handle with our EFS, um, EFS ID. So let me go out of this file. So this is our EFS ID. So copy this EFS ID, copy it, go into the pv.yaml um, file and replace this part paste i have pasted so i've replaced that part with my id of my uh efs all right efs volume we created so that's all you need to so you need to also change the storage remember we use um 10 gb so change this to 10 gb so this is all you need to do here quick then let's look what we have again so we need to go to storage class so open the storage class uh we don't need to do anything under the storage class because the storage class is being used by the persistent volume claim and the persistent volume all right so quit so in this file i'm going to deploy my pvc my persistent volume and my storage class all right so this is what i'm going to do I'm going to do all at the same time. So that's what they've done here on step five. So I'm going to um, um, I'm going to pod. I'm going to back up these files. Pod one and um, pod two. Pod two backup. So LL. So I just have this guy. We don't yaml so i'll now say q q apply dash f dot so this is going to create for me persistent volume claim persistent volume and a storage class all right so and i now have all of that so if i say kubectl get pv so pv is going to tell me that i have a persistent volume of capacity 10 gb and the access mode is read write many read write many Reclaim policy is retained, bound is bound, and the claim is now claiming the PVC. The storage class is this and that. So I can also check my 
PVC, persistent volume claim. So here's my persistent volume claim. The name is EFS claim, and that's claim the volume. It is EFS PV. The capacity is 10 GB. And yeah, so that's it. All right. So now we are all done and set. How do we, if we go back to our document, sorry, our diagram. Now, how do we make our MongoDB? So yeah, we have the MongoDB. This guy is MongoDB. Now, how do we make the MongoDB to make use of the persistent volume? Let's go and check. Let's go and check. So now, um, let's look at the content of this pod, pod one, how they have um, used the persistent volume in this pod. So let's see. So this is the process. This is how they've used it. So I'm going to copy this content from volume mount. All right. I'll copy from volume mount, copy it. Then I will go to where I have my uh, MongoDB uh, manifest. All right. So I have a manifest for MongoDB, which I've already set up. It's a deployment. All right. It's a deployment and um, it's a MongoDB deployment. Okay. So, all right. So this, I'm going to paste this guy. Um, I'm going to paste this guy. So let me paste this guy. So uh, let me arrange them the way they should be. So volume mount has to be in the same line with containers. Then this is an array. Okay, comes like this. Then volume has to be in the same line with spec. Great. Perfect. Persistent volume and the name. Okay. Now, um, this volume mount could be anything, all right? But we're just using persistent storage. And the mount part is data, all right? Data, or I could change it to, let's say, data dash db, okay? Data dash db. So that's all. That's all we need to do. So this, my deployment, will now make use of that 10 GB persistent storage. All right? 10 GB persistent storage. So let's escape and save and quit. Okay? So now, let's let's watch. All right? So the next thing I will do, I'm going to run uh, a kubectl, kubectl apply dash earth dash f uh mongo stack all right so mongo stack. So if i hit enter let's see what happens oh, oh, oh invalid invalid uh let me check um how do you have set up that thing uh where is the problem coming from unknown field vo volumes in this um let me go back there Unknown field, volume mount. Okay, okay. It's like it has to be in the same. Oh, 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 oh. Let me check. Let me check. Oh, sorry. AWS example Kubernetes in directory multiple pods spec. Let me copy this guy though, so that I don't have to be coming here to um, um, let me copy it to home. All right. So if I go to home, I have the file there. So let me move that file, pod one to microservice. So it's there. So change directly to microservice. So I have, let's check content so okay okay volume mount is under name then volumes is under container great so if i open mongodb so volume mount should be under you should, should be here great perfect then this volume should be under container great Perfect. Skip, save, and quit. 
So if I do kubectl apply dash f mongo stack, we should be fine now, created. But now let's see if our MongoDB is now using the persistent volume, kubectl get pod. Container creating, container creating, container creating. It's taking too long. Why is it still stick in container creating? So let me check the logs. Keep CTL logs, logs, this guy, the port name. All right. Let's check. Let's look at the challenge. Whoa, 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 whoa. Container import is waiting to start. It's waiting to start. So let's describe this guy. Keep CTL describe, describe port, then the port name. <laughs> Oh, 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 I see, I see. So we are having this challenge. Output failed to resolve this file. The file system mount target IP address cannot be found. And the user, as in this worker, all right, this ID is not authorized to perform elastic file system. Okay. So now to, um, to resolve this challenge, it's a simple challenge though, to resolve this challenge, I may have to go to um, my um, um, I am I am I am. I have to go to I am and go to roles and create a custom role, all right? And assume role, all right? And assume role for EC two. So this is what I, you do. So you click on create role, and the service is AWS service. And the use case is EC two. Then click on next. I have done this already. So click on it. I just want to show us. Then um, create a policy. All right. Uh, let's attach a policy. Um, I'm going to be attaching uh, full access EC2. Let's look for EC2. Amazon EC2 full access. And if you need to give it um, admin access as well. Also, let's check for. Where's the full access again? Uh, full access, sorry. Full access. Amazon EC2 full access. Have I clicked? Um, where is this admin now? Administrator administrator full access administrator access and uh ec2 full access remove this ec2 full access i already clicked that i already clicked it though then click on create policy or next go to next then the role name you can say assume role or whatever all right then so these are your two policies admin access and though if you have admin access you don't need this anymore all right so it's either of these all right so i need to give the worker nodes um an assume role all right so i have created this rule already then click on what's create so i'm going to cancel it cancel it so what i will do i'll go to um, um ec2 okay i'll go to ec2 this is ec2 instance so um this is my worker nodes these are the worker nodes, all right? These and these are my worker nodes, okay? So I'll first of all, I'll click on this first worker node. I'll go to security. Then um, I'll click on action, security, modify I am role. So modify I am role, I'm going to be attaching an Zoom role, which I created already. An Zoom role, EC2, all right? So attach this rule and click on update. This for uh, the first guy, all right? So I'll do the same thing for the second guy, okay? I'm gonna attach that Azum rule. So I'll go to action, um, security, modify. Then I'll look for that Azum rule, EC2, update. So, so far I have attached um, assume role to these guys. I've attached assume role. So if you quickly 
if we quickly check our container, if we now check kubectl get pod, you should see that very soon this guy should start, should be created and running successfully. Uh, get pod uh, should be up. So let's describe. It takes some time though. It takes some time. Okay. It's, it's waiting. So I'm going to be pausing the video because it takes some time. All right. To clear these, um, these access challenge. All right. So let's do it one more time. I'll pause the video and I'll be right back when it's done. So here's the error we are still getting. Though is is a kind of warning. Failed to mount. Failed mount. Unable to attach or mount volume. Unmounted volumes. Persistent storage. Unattached volumes. Persistent storage. QBPI. Timed out. Waiting for the condition. It should be fine uh, because it was because of uh, this uh access problem we got all of these all right it should be it takes some time though it should be up any moment from now because we have assigned um a role to the worker nodes right we've assigned a role to the worker nodes so i'm still going to be posting the video and then um, i'll be right back when everything is up and running all right so um we are still waiting for for this guy to to sync so he's not syncing. so what i will be doing is let me delete delete it delete the mongo stack and um, recreate it because as you can see qct gets pulled it's still in container creating phase so it means that it's stuck so qct delete dash f mongo stack so it's deleted so qct um apply dash f mongo stack so let's get that created and see so qctl get pod um it's an dependent state um let's check it again get pod dependent state so qctl describe pod so this pod name save it and um, let's check it's not always nice it's in the independent states all right so let's see let's see if everything goes on well should be up and running okay so <clears throat> like i said it takes some time for these things to sync so let's see all right okay so qctl gets poured so our port is now running so like i said you may have to change um, um, the assume role, right? You have to create an assume role and attach the assume role to the worker nodes, right? To the worker nodes. Then your, then sh this error should clear, right? Then this error should clear. So QTTL get pods still up and running. QTTL describe that pod. So when we describe the pod, we would see that let's go to the beginning of the pod. So the pod name is this default name space is run on this node. Labels are these, annotations are this. Let's go to where it started using the uh, mount. So it's been mounted on data slash. Uh, slash data dash db from persistent storage all right the condition so this is the volume persistent storage all right and um yeah i think that's all that's all that's all so describe one more time and no it's not ready okay no not ready all right, I think um, QCTL, QCTL gets poured. Okay, QCTL gets node. Okay, okay, I get it. Okay, all right. Okay, we are having some challenge. I could see that I'm having errors on my 
worker nodes. My nodes are showing not ready because the worker rules, the worker rules has been detached. Okay, so to be on the safer side, this is what I will do. Um, this is the worker, the worker role that I detached. Okay, so this worker role, I'm going to add um, additional policies, right? Inbuilt policies. I'm going to add Amazon EC2 full access and Amazon administrator access to this role, right? So to this role, so that um, we will be able to boycott this error, all right? This error. So I'll go back to my EC2 instance, all right? And change the rules back to worker rule. That's why you are we are having um, um, the note not ready. So EKS worker rule, I'm going to attach it back. Then I'll do the same thing to this other guy. Actions, security, modify AM role, EKS, worker, worker role. So mind you, on this role, I have assigned two inbuilt policies, um, administrator access policy, as well as um, EC2 full access policy. So with this, I think our notes should be back to ready state let's see all right so it's now back to ready state so now that it's back to ready state let's check our ports get port our port should also be running so let's describe the port and then describe the port yeah it should be ready any moment it's fine four minutes yeah it's now most five minutes okay so everything is now working as expected. ChipCTL get node is running. So I will advise that you give more um, permission to your worker role, to your Azum role. Okay. So in this my worker role, I have got, I have got um, other policies, inbuilt policies. Okay. So I have. EC2 full access and um, administrator access added to these other um, policies that we have already. Okay, so I think uh, with that, we are good to go. So far, so good. We've been able to see how to set up um, a persistent volume, persistent volume on um, persistent volume using um, CSI driver on amazon eks so if i go to my volume here on um, amazon i should see that storage that storage was uh, 10 gb right so if i refresh uh let's see if that will come uh because it is and okay so it will be under efs apologies so here it is here it is so it's not a completely um uh, is it not, it's not an EBS, it's an EFS. So this is our storage and um, network monitoring. If you go to monitoring, you should have some metrics. So these are some metrics, all right? It's now coming as expected, okay? So if I need to do something, let's, let's say for instance, all right, uh, I need to exec into uh, the port, QTTA get port. I need to exec into this port, right? So I'll take chip CTL exec, exec into this guy, um, exec into this guy dash it dash dash bash, all right? So now I have executed into the running container, all right? Which is a DB. So let's check uh, our mount point. So our mount point is data slash DB data dash db sorry so if i go into the directory data slash db i should have some content it's empty right so i want to create some files inside of this data all right so let's say um i touch um touch a file persisted persistent file.txt okay 
So, all right. So I want to show us that persistence is really working. So I'll exit. I'll exit. Let me go back into there again. All right. And go to data slash DB and look at this is the only file we have here. Here's the only file we have here, right? Now I will exit. Now I'm going to kill the container. So I would say uh, kubectl delete delete dash f. So delete what Mongo stack. All right. So I'm, I've deleted that file. So it's expected that um, that everything will go. All right. Both the data. All right. But now if I try to run uh, kubectl apply apply the same pod again i run it again it has run so kubectl gets pod okay so it's running right so now let me execute into this container and see if i still have that file i created earlier so let's do um uh, exec exec into this guy so this will change this will be 4xlqp so 4xlqp so i exist so i changed directory into data db so let's see if we have that content you can see we still have that content inside of here so so far so good we have been able all right we have been able to see how we can all right set up a persistent storage with Amazon EKS with the help of the CSI driver. So back to our document, uh, sorry, uh, 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 our whiteboard, you can see, so even if, even if this guy goes down, the DB goes down, which we just, uh, just demo, even if the DB goes down, we still have our data being persistent. So at this juncture, uh, we, we, I will be calling this um, session uh, uh, a close and I thank you and I encourage us to try and like our page, comment, share and subscribe and thank you. See you in our next video.